so ready? Are you 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 ready for the partner? Go! Patchin Lukens Oso. Seven hundred ESPN, ten eighty ESPN, and on the web at seven hundred ESPN.com. It is Patch and Lucas and us on the Coors Light Frost Bridge Studio. Thanks for being here. Welcome aboard. Happy to have you here for just a one-hour extravaganza. This show is so short today. We've only How got- short is it? Thank you. Thank you, Ed McMahon. It's so short, we don't even have time for a full show of people. It's Patchin and Lucas today. <laughs> no oh so. We don't even have time to get that in. How about that? Keith is winging his way to the Palouse to shoot high school football. Should be a nice night. Should be. Not too warm. Nice and cool. This is this is part of my favorite time of the year right yeah, now. Yeah, it's pretty good. Today, not so much. Yesterday, not so much. But the forecast for the weekend looks to be outstanding if you're going to be outside at a football game. And you will be. If you read our pals Vince Grippy's blog, too many choices this weekend. Whitworth, Idaho, Eastern, Cougars, all at home. All at home, yep. So the weather forecast... Low to mid-70s tomorrow, Sunday, mid to high 70s. If you were if you were into it, you could you could easily do two football games. I mean, obviously, well, what time's the Vandals game? That's the only two one I don't know. Two o'clock kickoff. Oh, you could obviously do the Cougars game and the Vandals game. I'm there's, go- there's I am no going problem. to make an, an attempt. I'm hoping to get there by You'll the end of the first the quarter. Game. Yeah. We yeah. got a post game. But if you had a secret parking spot on the campus, yeah. you could go for 315. At the Idaho game, three hours, 15 minutes, leave and be close to being in your seat by 3.30 if you had a se- super yeah. secret parking spot. What about what about Eastern and WSU? You couldn't catch all of each game. It'd be, you know. You'd have, you'd, might have, you'd have to leave Eastern early or, one or, or be one, late to WSU. How, I, I, I don't think... I don't think I've ever driven from Cheney to Pullman or Pullman to Cheney. I've done it. Is that like Pullman to Spokane? Is it an hour and 15? Yeah, okay, you okay, can okay. take a little bit of time on Okay, driving five over the speed limit. Yes. there You, you can take you can take the, the road that goes from Cheney, and it comes down, and, and, it, and it puts you on Highway 95, 195, um, just south of Spangle. Well, if you're coming, yeah, yeah, but there's actually another way from Cheney that drops you off a little north of Roselia. Yeah, you don't want to do that. No, that's was, actually faster. I was told by the people in Cheney not to do that. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, nonetheless, it's about an hour and 15 minutes. You could do Eastern and Washington State. Again, the problem with Washington State, Rick, is you're going with traffic. Yeah. If you're if you were gonna do it's too bad the Cougar game didn't start at one and the Eastern game start at five thirty, you go the opposite direction of tra well, I guess you'd go in the same way of traffic. Yeah. But you could. You could do it. You could do it. Or you could just do like me and put the T V in the living room. <laughs> um and since since I knocked a wall out, I can now work in the kitchen and see into the living room and see the TV while I'm working on it, on the kitchen. Uh, Cole with the text saying, guys, I got the brats and the crock pot at home. I'll brown them in the pan tonight and have brats and beer tomorrow. Beat that. That's good. Are you going to cook those brats in beer? Or marinate them? You know, beer, real beer brat? Uh, what I have done before is I've cooked them on the grill and then put them in a bath of beer and onions. That's the way to go, yeah. And then and then leave them in there for a little bit and then serve them out. It, it's not – you don't have the crispiness of, of a grilled brat where you've got that because the, the beer will soak up, will soften it up. That's but okay. It, but, it, but, yeah, it's, a, it's you cook them and then you bathe them. They swim in the beer for an hour with the onions and peppers if you like. I recommend throwing that beer out when, when you're done. 
Don't, don't try and drink no, it. No, 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 no. Uh, Matt says, I'll save you a spot at my tailgate with barbecue food and a cold beverage in the cooler. Or what, where are you going to be, Matt? That'd be the question for me. Is Matt going to be in Cheney? Is he going to be at Idaho? Is he going to be at Washington State? Is he at the Pine Bowl? Because all four teams are at home. And we got a text said the Vandals will get blown out, so it will be easy to get to the WSU game on time. And they're not going to get blown they're out. They're not no, going to get not, blown out. That's not going to happen this no, week. No, this is Wofford. This is an FCS school. Idaho's winning this game. The question is by how much. We'll have our NFL picks coming up a little bit later. Jason Gesser will join us at 3.30 to tell us what we're looking for in the Cougar game. So we got a jam-packed hour right now. Are you a, are you a tailgate guy? I, uh, yeah, yes. I, I'm not a, I've never set up a tailgate. I've never been the guy who's organized a tailgate. You've attended tailgates. I've attended many a tailgate and enjoyed them immensely. Um, I think if I was ever in a position, which I've never been, I mean, because, you know, since I've been old enough, to be a, a good tailgater, uh, to be a guy who organizes a tailgate, I my Saturdays have always been taken up with, with football yeah. in, in a different capacity, so I can't organize a tailgate. Well, you can now. I could. But that would mean you'd have to have tickets to a game. I've kind of gotten used to Sitting just in- going to the tailgates Going to the tailgate area, and I swear, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's WSU or or Eastern, which are both good tailgate places, by the way. Eastern is just, in the last three, four years, has just exploded on tailgating. I mean, they're they're up there with WSU now. Well, Washington State has always, since I've been here, the last 30 years, has traditionally been... Well, to be honest with you, at times the tailgating was much more entertaining yeah. than the team that was on the football field. Hence the field. crowd not returning for the second half. Right. Uh, but I can I can walk through a tailgate area, and it, I would be hard-pressed to walk through a tailgate area and not be asked to stop and have a drink and something to eat with multiple people. So wh- why would I organize a tailgate? Yeah, I, I that's too much work. It's a lot. I'm impressed by the setups that people have. There are some really good setups. I am going to go on Saturday, the 10th, um, the 10th of October, to the first football game that I have ever been to, not in a working capacity. Ever. Ever. For a long time. For a, well, For a since, long since time. I was in college. Yeah. Because I'm, I mean, Saturday I'm going to go to, I'm, I'm broadcasting the Vandal game, and then I'm going to go to the Cougar game, and I may stick around and get some posts for the show. I don't know. It just depends on how the game goes. So, I mean, I will be in a working capacity. But October 10th, I will be going to the Eastern Washington game, and, and the last couple games I've gone to Eastern Washington, I've, I've basically filled in for Keith. We're right. on the sidelines. We're taking pictures for the... I man, I might have to partake in a tailgate. Well, you, you walk through that tailgate area, Dennis. You, 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 there's no need for you to buy anything because the people will just flag you down and start handing you food. It's it's pretty amazing. There's a guy that you and I know who's in. The, he's got a prime spot in the eastern tailgate area, and he has an SUV. Now, the last time I saw him, he had he had taken his SUV in there, and he and he p- opens the hatch, and the rear of his SUV, if you fold the seats up is a gigantic ice chest. Oh, so he's taken the... the... So, yeah, he just backs wow. his SUV in there, opens the hatch, pulls the top off the ice chest, and the beverage is on ice right there. It's amazing. Mike says you can't beat tailgating, but you got to stay for the whole game or it's not a full experience. I, I agree. That's why I wouldn't want to be the guy running the tailgate because you'd almost feel obligated because people tailgate before and after games. You'd almost feel obligated. You had to run out in the third quarter to refire up the stuff to get people ready. Right. to. Uh, nah, I want to go to the game. Mike says, where's the best tailgate in college football? Oh, I, you know, I don't think we've been to all of them. Um, uh, the best one... 
that I've – well, there are two. The, the best two that I've seen are the University of Illinois, which was amazing. I mean, and that was more beer-oriented. Um, I mean, there was a, this one guy who pulled up a, a van, like an old panel truck, and he pulls the side off of it, and there are four taps on the side of his truck. It it was really cool. Um, but then we went to Auburn. Yeah. And that was more barbecue-oriented. I mean, it was more food-oriented, yeah. I guess. Than, well, there was plenty of there was yeah plenty but, of beverage to be had. You could imagine that in, in, in Champaign, Illinois, they're going to be more beer-oriented. Yeah. I, I will tell you that I have been to Michigan State. I have been to... Every Pac-12 school, Mm -hmm. I have been to Auburn. Um, I've been to every Big Sky school. I'll tell you, Washington State is as good a tailgate area as there is. There's not. There's not as many people. Yeah. Like if you go to Auburn, it took us three hours to walk around and see oh, everything. It was, was ridiculous. And and Michigan stupid. State's the same way. And I'm sure Ohio State. When you guys went to Ohio State, yeah, it, there, uh, it, there's it was, so much, so many other things besides right, tailgating before right. a game at Ohio State. Right. Um, Notre Dame. Oh, Notre! I forgot Notre Dame. Notre Dame was Notre good. Dame started the night before. I yeah. mean, they had they they had they were there the night before grilling the night before. It was yeah, that was spectacular. John says LSU. With a text, Steve with a text saying, University of Oregon, top-notch tailgating. That's pretty good. I've, I've not been to Oregon in a while, but the last time I went to Oregon, it it was okay. wasn't great. wasn't bad, but wasn't great. Oregon's pretty good. Oregon State is okay. They're, they're just okay. Yeah, I wasn't impressed with Oregon State either. Um, Jim says Penn State. Mike adds, Bozeman is an experience. I will agree with that. Bozeman's a great place. Montana. Is a crazy place. I think Montana's amazing. And now Eastern is Eastern is trying to be like Montana in tailgating, and they're not there, but they do really well. Part of the problem in Missoula is most of the parking lots aren't really near the stadium. I mean, they are, but they aren't. Right. So if you go in one direction, you only see a few. If you go in another direction, you only see a few. If you go in a third direction, because there's three different ways to go to the stadium, there's only a yeah, few. Yeah, they're scattered. Right. Eastern's is is really good. Well, there's one main area, and then there are a couple of satellite right. areas. Yeah. Same with Washington State, the parking lot for Beasley and the baseball field. So it depends on how you're. But I, I would I would say Bozeman and and Missoula are both both good, really good. Yeah. USC is like non-existent. Um, it, well, USC's problem is is the neighborhood. Yeah, the neighborhood's not great. Yeah. And it's hard to get from point A to point B to see what the tailgate is. And to be honest with you, the SC people are a little stuck up, okay? They are. And U- UCLA is okay. Uh, they've got a great opportunity there with, uh, you know, the whole area around. It's a gigantic parking lot around the Rose Bowl. And they're, they, don't, they don't take advantage the way they should of the area that they have. And that's just a different – I think Southern California is a different deal. Honestly, I don't think we on the West Coast – for in most places, there are exceptions to every rule. Most of us on the West Coast don't know how to tailgate compared to people in Big Ten country, yeah. people in SEC country. We went to a Milwaukee Brewers. Wisconsin had a great tailgate. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we went to a Brewers game. Oh, baseball, yeah. <laughs> okay? You don't think of baseball as a tailgate extravaganza. It was one of the most un- – it looked like a football game tailgate. That was tailgating. professional. That was really good. Those people in the Midwest are pros. They do that 81 times a year? Well, probably just the weekend game. Well, it was a Sunday of Labor yeah. Day weekend is yeah. what it was. Yeah, um, that was that was pretty amazing. That was my second Brewers game. I went to one way back in the mid-'80s at, at Old County Stadium, and it was the same deal. It was on a weekend, and it was the same deal. I have walked through the Husky tailgate a few times. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, but it's different. It's wine, cheese, and fish. It is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You uh, you'll find you'll find ceviche at the uh, yes at the husky yes. tailgate. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the first time I walked through it, it was like, 
where's the barbecue? Where's the brats? Yeah. Where's the burgers? And it was a lot of fish and wine. And fruit. And fruit. Yeah, they're, 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 they're a little more healthy. Of course, they're a little more fit over there. That's, you know, they, and they look, they look marvelous in their mock turtlenecks and whatnot. Um, but uh, Arizona, Arizona State, not much just because of the heat. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, they're, they're, they don't do much. Utah wasn't great either. No. It's, yeah, wow. So really. Colorado was okay. Not, I would say not, Oregon and Washington State are the best tailgating in, in the Pac-12. Yeah, because Cal and Stanford aren't that great either. No. That's funny, isn't it? Yeah. The Pac-12 is like, eh. SEC, though. Uh, Corey with a text saying Boise State is nice. No, they're not, Corey. Boise no. State sucks. There's not one good thing about Boise State. No. Wow, that, the ripping kid. I like him. He's dead to me. I uh, know. I like him. He's out. Yeah. I, 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 when he I, finishes his career, he'll be back. Just like their basketball coach, Leon Rice. Dead to me. <laughs> dead. Their sports information director is a great guy. Joe used to work at Washington State. He's dead to me. Dead. You got blue and orange on, says Boise State dead. I want to, yeah, I saw a guy today walking out of the post office. He had a Boise State sweatshirt on him. I wanted to yell at him. That's how I feel when I see somebody with Boise State gear. I want to literally roll my window down and walk up to him and say, you're an idiot. I'll say this about the Boise State fans. They've kind of gotten back into more of a norm, a college football norm. Really? Because they, well, in, in their in their fanaticism, because when they when they were kind of rose up and became the cool little school that everybody you know people on the east coast are saying hey how about that little Boise State and everybody loved little Boise State and the, and the big things that they were doing and they, they they were getting on all these games they were they play on Thursday night Friday night didn't matter as long as they got on ESPN two when it was new it's like the, they were the stars of ESPN two and they kind of became this this you know kind of chic thing that. All of a sudden, it's like they, they weren't blue and orange. They were orange and a little blue. They was just like, look at me. I'm orange, baby. I'm Tennessee. I'm, I'm Broncos. I'm orange. And, uh, and it, it, it kind of ticked me off. No, I just... And so we, they were playing. Remember a few years ago, they played in Seattle. They opened up their uh -huh. season in Seattle playing Washington. And they got beat by a, a not very good Husky team. And the Boise State people were staying in the same hotel as us, but we were going to the Cougar game at CenturyLink Field. Mm -hmm. So I you know, so the day of the game we're down eating in the the eating the, the the breakfast in the restaurant. They had a nice breakfast buffet at this place and all these people walking around in orange and I'm talking like loud in my normal projected loud voice. Look at all these people wearing orange. When did Boise State become orange? And everybody's saying, Luke, shut up. Shh. They can hear you. I don't care if they can hear me. How come they're not blue and orange? No, they're orange. What is this orange? And the next day, after they'd lost, they, a whole bunch of them were sitting in the lobby, and they were wearing blue. Because they were blue because they lost. Yeah, and as, I, as, as, our, uh, as the car pulled up and I was ready to load all my gear into the car so we could go to the airport, I turned around and said, Boise State fans. No orange today, just blue. Just blue. Um, no, I, I I got no use for that. I I don't know what their tailgate is like. I've never been to a Boise State. I, the last time I went to a Boise State football game, I'm trying to remember, might have been in college. Nineteen eighty two for me. Oh no, I went to I went to a Washington State game at Boise State. Okay, and that was in the nineties. That was in the nineties. Yeah. 90s. yeah. Um, come sometime this hour, a couple of tickets to Def Leppard in the Spokane Arena, Wednesday, September 30th, with Sticks and Tesla. Tickets on sale now at the Spokane Arena box office, all Tickets West outlets, and at ticketswest.com or by calling 800-325-SEAT. That's 800-325-SEAT. Two tickets for caller 10 before we get out of here at 4 o'clock. Our NFL picks coming up, plus Jason Gesser in about 15 minutes. It's Patch and Lukens and also on the Coors Light Frost Brood Studio. I'm Kevin Kugler with This Week in the NCAA on Westwood One. Today we tell you about the journey of a devoted Southern California Trojan fan and how this week he became more than a fan. On Monday, Jake Olson, an 18-year-old freshman at USC, found out that he had earned a spot on the team as a walk-on long snapper. What makes Jake's story unique is that he's blind. 
After receiving a waiver from the NCAA to participate, he joined the team for workouts this week. He's protected from contact during practice, but Coach Steve Sarkeesian promised to someday get Jake into a game. Olsen has experience playing the position, having started as the long snapper on last year's varsity squad at Orange Lutheran High School in California. A system of in-game teammate support was worked out to allow Jake to overcome his lack of sight. The trip through the tunnel at the L.A. Coliseum will not be Jake's first, however. At age 12 and just weeks before a surgery to remove his right eye, he ran with the Trojan football team and enjoyed a sideline view of the game as an honorary team member. Retinoblastoma, a rare cancer of the retina, took Olson's left eye as an infant and is responsible for the loss of his right eye. We wish Jake the best of luck as a Trojan. Coming up, another championship team visits the White House on This Week in the NCAA. Hey, it's Flo, and this is my impression of me arguing with an old-timey Southern lawyer in a courtroom. Objection! You can't show my client's rates to your customers! We compare our progressive direct rate and our competitors' rates in one place, so shopping is easier. Only showing your rate when it's lowest! Slander in the court of law! New. We show our rate even when progressive isn't the lowest. Uh Uh-oh! I rest my case! Move to adjourn for snack time! Compare rates and save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Before girls' night out, my eczema flared up. Ugh, I felt like canceling. But then I tried Cortisone 10 Eczema Relief. It's specially formulated for eczema and has 1% hydrocortisone, the strongest non-prescription itch medicine for fast, lasting itch relief. It quickly stopped the itch and soothed my red, dry, flaky skin. With Cortisone 10 Eczema Relief, I was ready for girls' night out, and it was the best one ever. Cortisone 10 Eczema Relief. Feel the heal. Use as directed. Last week, we told you about the Duke men's basketball team's visit to the White House to celebrate their national championship. This week, it was the women's turn as the Connecticut women's basketball team made a return appearance to Washington on Tuesday. President Obama joked that with three straight annual visits and national titles, the team is now certified to provide White House tours. The president also praised Coach Gino Oriema and the team on their conference-leading GPA and on their volunteer efforts with food banks and children's hospitals. That's this week in the NCAA. I'm Kevin Kugler on Westwood One. If you're counting the days to hunting season, don't miss Cabela's Season Countdown Sale. Find great deals like 50% off Scentlock Alpha Tech and Headhunter Series Camo, $70 off Ruger American Cryptek Mandrake Bolt Action Rifles, and 25% off American Eagle 223 Rifle Ammo. Plus, get $80 in Cabela's bucks with the purchase of Vortex Viper HD Binos. See store for details. This season will be here before you know it, so hurry into Cabela's Season Countdown Sale going on now. Shop in store or online at Cabela's.com. Win tickets to see the Seahawks from 700 ESPN. Visit 700ESPN.com and sign up for the Field Pass. Follow the prompts within the registration and guidelines set forth with Field Pass participation. Once you've earned the correct number of points in your Field Pass account, sign up to win the currently available Seahawks tickets. One winner will be randomly drawn from the entries received for that particular game. Eight pairs of tickets will be given away between September 11th and December 22nd, 2015. Approximate value of prize is $300. One winner per household. Entrance must be at least 18 years of age and a legal resident of the state of Washington, Idaho, Oregon, or Montana. Prize to be claimed at the offices of KXLX 700 ESPN. At Boston's Restaurant and Sports Bar, we had to invent new words just to do-scribe how delightful our legendary dough is. Made from scratch daily using our time-tested recipe, one word says it best, delicious. Between our signature pizzas, limited-time only pizza burger, chicken, bacon, pizza, taco, or apple dessert pizza, you've got some serious dough decisions to make. Boston's Spokane, located at the Spokane Valley Mall. We've got you covered. Washington State University, inspiring good works for 125 years and counting. Hi, my name is Devin Seymour, a Washington State University senior majoring in political science and French. As a student volunteer, I've learned the importance of community involvement. Right now I'm serving as a WSU student volunteer in areas hit by the SR 530 mudslide. Before coming to WSU, I was very individualistic. I was very focused on my own career and ambitions. This school teaches you how to step out of your comfort zone and encourages you to do so by getting involved in your local community and making a difference in this world. That's made me a better person and it's made me have more faith in my own capabilities. I have way more confidence graduating now than when I came in. I hope to take my education to the world stage and help those who are struggling with conflict and natural disasters. 
Learn more at wsu.edu. Maybe it's hot out today, or maybe it's cold, but this weather's got you thinking about heading to the bar for an ice-cold Coors Light. Maybe it's a bar built into the steep cliff face of the Rocky Mountains with a waterfall that pours down on a multitude of Coors Lights, chilling them with the frigid power of a Rocky Mountain stream. You order one, and it suddenly appears in your hand. It's so cold, you feel like a giant eagle riding on cool winds content with your foray into Rocky Mountain country. Forgot about the weather already, didn't you? Thanks, Coors Light. Ah. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Great beer, great responsibility. Mattress Fur is the place to go for the perfect night's sleep. Keith and I did it almost four years ago. That's right. We're closing in on four years. And the night's sleep that we got last night, same as we got the first night that it was in our house. It's amazing. Perfect night's sleep. Now, it's going to take you about 15, 20 minutes, maybe even a half an hour if you're one of those who kind of wavers, goes back and forth. But isn't that worth a perfect night's sleep? for years on end. And they've got all the best brands. They've got all the styles. They've got firm. They've got soft. They've got medium. You know, you're, you're going to be like uh, the Bears and, the, you know, Goldilocks. Just for, not perfect, too hot, too cold. Well, this is too firm. This is too soft. This is just right. Mattress Firm, the perfect place to pick out the perfect bed for you. You know what? And if you pick one out there and you think you can make a better deal somewhere else, go ahead. Go try and find it. Because they're going to beat anybody's price by 10%. If they can't, your mattress is free. How about that? Mattress Firm. Place to go. Perfect for you. And remember, Mattress Firm doesn't carry it. You don't want it. It's as simple as that. Mattress Firm. Tell them Dennis and Keith from 700 ESPN sent you. You will be glad you went. Trust me. Every night you go to sleep. Save money, sleep happy now. Listen to Patch and Luke in Zenoso anywhere. Connect at 700ESPN.com. 700 ESPN, 1080 ESPN on the web at 700ESPN.com. It's Patch and Luke in Zenoso in the Coors Light Frost Brew Studio. I will, just to wrap up this tailgate thing, I will tell you one thing. Even a bad tailgate is a good tailgate. It's hard to screw up tailgating. Sure. As long as there's uh, as long as the beverage is cold or hot, right? And uh, and the food is and cooked. The, and the food is cooked, not not undercooked yes. or overcooked. Yes. Yeah. It's hard to screw that up. So when people go, "What's the best tailgate you've ever been to?" We can tell you these are some of the ones we liked. But if somebody said, "What's the worst tailgate you've been to?" I've never been to a bad tailgate. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. All right. NFL picks this week. Jason Guess are coming up in a few minutes. Uh, I have Keith's NFL picks. So first, before we give us our, our give give you our picks with the spread, how are we doing, Steve, after one week? Uh-oh. Dennis, Keith, and Wingman all went two and one. Andre went one, one, and one. He had a push right out of the gate. And then Rick had a Wingman-esque 0 and 3 in the yep. NFL. Wow. Okay. This is uh, true. Andre did get Andre, our Vegas picker, did get the game last night right. And he said, in fact, he would have bet Denver on the money line. So he would have made even more money last night had he, well, I'm sure he oh, did bet smoke. it. So there you go. I've never seen a team give away a game more than last <laughs> night. That, that was, was, that was just like, we don't want to win. That was stunning. All right. I'll give you Keith's NFL picks. Uh, Tampa Bay is at New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans is a 10 point. Uh, favorite in this one. I know a lot of people are picking New Orleans uh, in their elimination pools. Um, that's the longest odds on the board. Keith is going to take New Orleans and lay the 10 points. Miami's a six-point favorite at Jacksonville. He's going to lay the six points and take the uh, road uh, favorite in Miami. And Seattle is at Green Bay. The Seahawks are getting three and a half. He's going to take the Seahawks and the points in that one. All right. <laughs> It's funny. I, I, I. These are all. I all had all those games as options for me to take, and I picked them all different way, the the opposite way of Keith. Really? And and remember, I'm the zero and three guy. Well, that could change. <laughs> so go ahead and give us your picks then. Well, I'm gonna get with the Seahawks. I'm gonna go with Green Bay and lay the three and a half. Okay. Um. I'm gonna let the Miami Jacksonville game go. I'm gonna go 
with Tampa, the Tampa New Orleans game, that's a ten point spread. Ten, yep. Yeah, I that's just too too good to pass up. Okay. And New Orleans did not impress me last week, so And Tampa did? Well, no. I no, they didn't. <laughs> Jameis was awful. He he was not good. Um but I'm still gonna take Tampa and the ten points. Okay. I, I'm gonna if I get ten points on an NFL team, a lot of times I'm gonna take it. And I've, this is one where I'm gonna take it. Okay. Um, and Detroit's at Minnesota. Minnesota looked horrible. They did. I can't imagine they're as bad as they looked last week at San Francisco, but they looked horrible. Detroit's offense looked pretty good. They couldn't stop San Diego from scoring, but stopping Minnesota from scoring doesn't appear to be a problem. <laughs> so I'm going to take the two points that the Lions are getting on the road at Minnesota. Somebody's going to be 0-2 in that game to yeah. start the season. Two teams that people thought had a chance to make the playoffs. Steve, what's your NFL picks? With the Seattle Green Bay game, I can't touch the the line. I'm looking at the over under of 49, and I have to go over on that. I think those two teams can score a bunch of points. Um, then I'm I'm skipping Arizona Chicago, even though I should probably take Arizona. I'm going to for no good reason. I'm going to Tennessee Cleveland. I'm going to pick my boy Marmar Marcus Mariota. And uh, lay a point and a half and take the Tennessee Titans over the Cleveland Browns. And then I do like uh, Miami as a six-point favorite of Jacksonville. So I'll lay six points there and take Miami. All right. I am also going to uh, wager on the Green Bay game in our imaginary pool here. I'm taking Green Bay and giving three and a half points. So I'll take them at home. Um, Baltimore is at Oakland. Um, the, the line didn't interest me in that game, but, uh, the over under did 43 is the number I'm taking the uh, 43 and a half. Excuse me. I'm taking the under in that one. And I know that Buffalo is talking. I know they're talking a lot. Um, but they are, they are one point, uh, underdogs at home to new England. I'm taking the Patriots. Um, the Patriots have been quiet this weekend. Buffalo has been yakking, but I'm going to take uh, new England in that game. And uh, give up the point. It's the first NFL uh, road team I have taken so far this season. So those are our NFL picks. We do college picks on Thursday, NFL picks on Friday. And we'll keep track. And uh, Andre Lawrence from Bet Andre, B-E-T-O-N-D-R-A, he picks as well with us. He gave us his NFL picks. Um, he took New England as well, uh, took Baltimore and the points, and then he took Denver last night uh, as a road Underdog. So those are his picks. We'll let you know how we do next week. Jason Gesser coming up next. We'll talk about the Cougars and the University of Wyoming. Patch and Lucas and also on the Coors Light Frost Brood Studio. You're listening to Guy Talk, broadcasting live from the Sport Clips Haircuts locker room. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, boxers or briefs? Speaking briefly, boxers. Unless you're a boxer, then I'd go briefs. Next caller. I want to find my nearest Sport Clips. But I don't want to ask for directions. It's not technically asking for directions. If you use sportclips.com to find your nearest Sport Clips location, then no one will ever know. Let's take a break for a word from our sponsor, Sport Clips, where guys go to get an awesome haircut while watching sports on TV. Throw in our relaxing massaging shampoo and our legendary hot steam towel, and you've got our MVP haircut experience. Your head will be as majestic as a freshly mowed Major League outfield. Try it today. Last caller, you're on the air with Guy Talk. So how cool is getting a haircut at Sport Clips? Oh, it's like stepping up to the plate and slam dunking a touchdown. That's all the time we have today. This has been Guy Talk brought to you by Sport Clips, where it's good to be a guy. Trucks and harvest go hand in hand. And during our fall harvest sale, when you buy one of these, you get a free box of apples from Harvest House. Ford F-Series trucks are the number one selling trucks 38 years running. In 2015, F-150 is the North American truck of the year. And we have lots of them. Most with 0% financing for 72 months. Nissan Titans, Rogues, and Muranos are all on sale with great low interest rates, plus factory cash on select models. And we have lots of them. Most with 0% or 0.9% financing for 60 months. 0% APR financing for 72 months available on all 2015 F-Series trucks and select 2015 Nissan Altimus and Sentras. 0% or 0.9% APR financing available on most Nissan Rogue or Titans and Muranos. Factory cash, trading allowances, or rebates may be available on select Ford and Nissan models in stock, but may require possible FMCC or NMAC prior approval. See dealer for details. Negotiable $150 documentation fee may be added to the sale. So harvest yourself a great deal and get a free box of apples from the Harvest House during the fall harvest sale at Wendell Ford, Nissan, Infinity, and Used.
31 day STA bus passes. Now at participating Rosars, Super One, Huckleberries, Safeway, and Yoke service counters. Spokane Transit, how a great city moves. Hey, you get uh, Zero Res a call this month and book three rooms. You're going to get a very special gift. Absolutely free, you're going to get a carpet spotting kit. What is a carpet spotting kit? I'm going to tell you about that in a second because I just saw a video on it, and it's pretty amazing. Uh, also amazing is the way that Zero Res cleans carpet because they come in and they go to work in your home. Uh, that truck-mounted system shows up in your driveway, shows up on time, and when they go to work, they bring in, uh, you know, they put up the corner guards, they they make sure that they've got foot covers every time they enter your house, and then they go to work cleaning using an empowered water system. Run the hoses through your house. It's a, a, a an injection of water and then an incredible suction of the water out. There's no soap, no shampoo, no detergent, no harsh chemicals, just water. It's a special empowered water that is a super cleaning agent. It goes in, it grabs a hold of the dirt, pulls it out, and with that suction system, they pull out most of the water, along with the dirt and the dust and the allergens and all the nasty stuff that's settled in there. Now your carpet is truly clean, the little bit of water left behind, and that's going to dry in a matter of hours, and then your carpet is truly clean. There are no residues left behind from the cleaning agent. None. Just clean carpet fiber. That's all that's left behind. So there's no soapy residue. There's no chemical residue left in your carpet. It's gorgeously clean and will stay that way months longer. Now, if you book three rooms during the month of September, you're going to get that carpet spotting kit for free. Just saw a video on it, and they uh, they stained up a carpet using some ketchup and some other stuff and let it settle for a second, and then just uh, kind of dabbed that carpet spotter uh, uh, fluid on there, and you give it a little rub, and it lifts stains right out. Now, as long as they don't settle way down into the carpet, you're awesome with this carpet spotter. It works really well for all those mishaps and spills that might occur between zero res visits. Tell them you want the back-to-school special. Tell them Rick Lukens told you to ask for it when you call Zero Res at 92Clean. That's 92Clean, or book online at zeroresspokane.com. Oh, you missed that interview. It's waiting for you at 700ESPN.com. Patch and Lucas and us on the Coors Light Frost Fruit Studio, 700 ESPN, 1080 ESPN on the web at 700ESPN.com. Patch and Lucas and Soso, Coors Light Frost Fruit Studio. Steve, did we get a winner on the uh, the ticket window? You know, I'll, uh, I, I hate to break it to people, but I'll be giving those away here shortly. Okay, we have not given away those Def Leppard sticks and Tesla tickets for Wednesday the 30th. Steve will hand those out a little bit later on. Stand by your phone. Wyoming comes to town on uh, Saturday to play the Cougars. Cougs looking to go to 2-1 and one on the season. The Wyoming Cowboys still looking for their first victory of the year. Jason Gesser joins us, a guy who is, uh, will be here every Friday to talk about the Cougars' opponent, but also a guy who was an assistant coach at the University of Wyoming for one year a couple of years ago. So, Jason, there are guys on this football team at Wyoming that you know, in fact, guys that you recruited. Yeah, there are a couple of guys that are still there. Um, unfortunately, don't know any of the quarterbacks. All well, the quarterbacks left when I left. So I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign or how <laughs> you want to take that, but uh, – um, they have a handful of guys on the defensive side of the ball, a defensive line, a couple receivers, a couple running backs uh, that I know very, very well. well. Wyoming does not look – it doesn't seem that the Cowboys are off to a great start. They lost to an FCS school. Uh, they got beat badly last week by a team from the MAC that people don't think is going to do much this season. What's going on with the Cowboys right now? I think they're going through a transition. Obviously, if you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a chance. And we know how the the game is kind of driven nowadays. And earlier on, uh, from what I understand, their first game, uh, Kaufman is the quarterback that transferred from Indiana to Wyoming, wasn't getting any playing time at Indiana. And he played in that first game, got injured in that first game, came out. Um, I want to say they threw the ball like 38 times in that first, in that first game. So uh, more balanced offensively. And then last game, their second-string quarterback on the second series ends up breaking his collarbone, going out, and so their third-string quarterback came in and played. And so, um, really, things kind of wheels kind of fell off there, and they just ran the ball from that point on. Uh, a lot of QB runs, a lot of 
zone read runs, fly sweep uh, runs, things like that. And so now Kaufman is coming back, the quarterback that started off the season and was named the starting quarterback coming out of camp. So he's coming back in for this game. So may see some more uh, balance offensively from them, but they're still trying to figure some things out. Defensively, their secondary is just uh, – they, they're – they're very, very thin back there. They have a couple walk-ons that safety been playing. They've been rotating some guys around, um, and they've uh, they've gotten beat uh, in, the, in on some some pretty big deep balls, and they haven't been able to really stop anybody in the passing game, which holds well, pretty well for the Cougs going into this game. So they're starting to find their way defensively. I think they have their identity offensively. Um, just been missing their cutest last game, game and a half. So we'll see how they come about uh, against the Cougs on uh, on Saturday. Now, I don't know if you've been uh, present uh, for any of the Cougar practices uh, this week, and I, I, mean, I know you've got other duties, Jason, um, but uh, obviously there had to be some emphasis put on special teams given the faux pas of the first couple of weeks uh, on special teams for Washington State. Yeah, they've, they've, they put an emphasis on that, and defensively they put an emphasis on stopping the run, uh, a couple things that uh, they want to focus on. Um, other than that, uh, you know, if you look at the game, and, and obviously those two big returns stick out to you on special teams. Field goal team, tremendously uh, just a, a 90 difference from game one to game two with uh, Eric Powell going out there, hitting a 47, 50, or 46, and a 37-yard field goal. And their whole team just up front, uh, snapping, holding, kicking, that whole that whole process just went so much better in game two against Rutgers. Um, but as far as the, the return game goes, from from their standpoint and from them understanding certain things, you look at the kickoff cover, they were holding Grant from Rutgers, uh, who's a, a very dynamic returner, to to some of his lowest productions even throughout the whole, not just this season, but all of last season before he gave up that big one on a kickoff cover team. And then obviously the punt cover in the last one, um, there was only two punts in the game, one punt return. He had no, re- no return yards. Obviously the second one went to the house. Uh, I think it was just past 50 yards or so. But uh, definitely an emphasis working on there in practice this week. So, uh, and, and, and coming from the coaches, on those two returns, it was just one or two guys getting out of their lanes and kind of doing their own thing. So it wasn't a, a schematic breakdown. It wasn't a huge uh, just faux pas of, of anything. I think the biggest mistake in, in going from even Coach Maley, and, and, and you can talk to Coach Leach, they probably should have kicked it away from him on a second chance. And um, didn't give, not give them a chance for that punt return. So uh, some some things that they they feel that they can definitely just clean up and work on this week in practice, and hopefully it shows through on Saturday. Jason, we saw a really good effort by the team to to come up with a drive late to win a road game, and we saw a disappointing performance at home. Uh, when you come back at home in front of the home folks, in front of the students, after the last time you played there with a dif- disappointing performance. Does that motivate a team a little bit more just because the last time they were in that building they didn't play very well? I sure hope so. If it was me out there, I would be. Um, I think that first game is going to – you don't want to keep going back to that first game as the whole entire season goes on. But that game, like we've talked about previously on, 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 on Monday and, and other shows, that that game has to hold true in the back of your mind. You have to You have to let that motivate you. You have to let that push you forward. And you have to go out there and say, you know what, fans – we're sorry for that first performance, but you know what? We're going to come out here and we're going to give you a, a heck of a performance coming up on Saturday, so come out and enjoy it. And I think that you have to have that mentality. As a player, it, it's very easy to sit there and say, hey, we're never going to think about that game again, but let that game motivate you. And I, I truly think that these players are, are thinking that way and in a couple of conversations that I've had from them, um, and even listening to Gabe Marks after the game um, of, of Rutgers, the Rutgers game, he said, hey, fans, stick with us. We're coming back home. We're gonna we're gonna keep moving forward. Sorry about that first one, but stick with us. And and so that's in the back of their mind. And so um, I truly do think that they're gonna come out here and try to put up a show for all the fans to make up for that first game. Jason, I, I'm looking at some statistics, and you know we've all heard the line statistics lie. Um, Wyoming's giving up an average of 36 points a game. They're giving up um, almost seven yards uh, a snap. Uh, they're giving up almost 70 percent completion ratings as an offensive guy who was a quarterback or or a coach and you look at those numbers and you see that they're having trouble a stopping people and stopping them from scoring do your eyes light up as an offensive player as an offensive coach when you go in against an offense or a defense that that's really struggling of course uh you see stuff like that and and Initially, when you look at, at things like that as a, as a coach, even as a quarterback, it's game prep for the, for the upcoming opponent. Um, 
you see, okay, they've struggled, but who have they played? How good were those offenses? What type of offenses were they facing? And then you go and say, okay, how do we match up against what they're doing? As you start to watch the film, then you start saying, okay, well, schematically, we match up very well. Okay, what about one-on-one personnel-wise? Do we match up with them? Are we better? Uh, as you start evaluating the film and looking at players out there on the field, and then that's when you start even, I don't want to say licking your chops even more and getting more and more excited. Uh, and then you start wondering, okay, well, are they going to do something different? Because obviously what they've done the first two weeks hasn't worked. So will they go and bring a bunch of blitzes? Will they go and change their, 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 their coverages? Will they play more man? Because uh, like we talked about on Monday show, Washington State struggles on – the reason why they've struggled on third down is because they haven't gotten free and haven't they had a very much production versus man. Now Wyoming is a zone team, and they don't feel they can match up man-to-man versus uh, Washington State, so they're probably going to play zone. But do they come into this game and say, hey, look – you know what? They've struggled against man. Let's go out there and let's, let's have a different man package, a different zone uh, a zone blitz package, try to create some pressure on the quarterback. We don't want him just standing back there all day and having a chance to go and throw the ball downfield. And so you start thinking, what could they possibly do and what would they do differently? So um, do you lick your chops? Yes, but you have to stay in that mind frame of game plan and prepare for what they could possibly do and not just what they've done. The other thing is third down percentage, their defense is allowing 55%. On third downs, that's not good. And they've been outscored in the first half of games so far in two games, 52-14. to Yikes. And Washington State, well, that obviously against Portland State last time at home against an opponent they should beat, had, uh, I mean, they said 10 points at halftime, had trouble scoring in the first half. I would think, Jason, that, I mean, everybody wants to have a fast start, but you don't want to have a slow start against these guys like you did, at least as far as scoring. Uh, like they did against Portland State. I know they moved the ball against Portland State, but they didn't score. Yeah, no, no question. Uh, that's the biggest thing, I think, that why uh, Washington State had uh, success in that Rutgers game. That first drive, right down the field, got in a rhythm, went down the field and scored, got the ball in the end zone. wasn't just a field goal, but got the ball in the end zone. And I think they want to do the same thing, obviously, this week against Wyoming. Anytime you can start fast, you get in your rhythm, it helps out. Uh, not just against uh, uh, any opponent, but especially when you're favored. Because you guys all know, and I've been the underdog my entire life and have been, sat in that underdog role. When that underdog smells an opportunity that they can hang around the game, and we saw it game one versus Portland State, if they have that opportunity, they get more and more confidence as the game goes along and say, hey, we're, we're one score out, we're two scores out, we're right there, we're three points away. We just got to go make a stop, and then all of a sudden we can take the lead, which is what Portland State did. You don't want to give a Wyoming team who is struggling any kind of confidence or any kind of belief that, hey, you know what, this game is going to be different than the first two. You want them to have the same feel like, hey, here we go again. And, you know, we've we struggled the first two games, and now we're going to struggle again against these guys, and that's why you want to start fast. You just don't want to give any momentum or any kind of confidence to an underdog team that can go and smell blood. Jason, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Uh, don't forget, uh, coverage starts at 3.30 tomorrow on 9.20 KXOY. 5.30 uh, is the kickoff from Pullman. Uh, we appreciate your time as always, Jason. We'll visit with you on Monday next week. Sounds great. Hey, uh, can, I, can I get in on those, on those tickets you guys are giving away? Is that, is that possible? We'll, uh, what do we'll, I have to do? No, we'll, we'll see. We'll, 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 Just we'll, be caller number 10 at 244-3776. That's all you have to let, do. Let me see if I can help you out there for all your your uh, your patronage that you have been able to do uh, to do for us here. So, uh, I'm joking. I, I'm, I'll get I'm back to you. Hey, guys, it's always a pleasure being on with you guys. All right, you guys Jason. Have a good weekend. All right, Jason. We can, right, so, we, so, so you're not a Def Leppard fan? He might be. <laughs> I'll ask him on Monday. Yeah, all right. We got plenty of tickets to give away. We got lots. We got lots. All right. Time who, who isn't a Def Leppard fan? Let's go. Well, I, 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 I'm interested. I'd go if all three. Sticks? Are you kidding me? One of the greatest concerts. Now that the lead singer's different, it was one of the greatest concerts I ever saw. I think they're in the college. same. I think they're the same group as Little River Band. Sticks, Little River Band. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're the same people. No, they're not. Stop it. It's Little River Band and Air Supply. Get oh, your, Air Supply. Get, that, okay, you're right. Get your 70s right. slash 80 <laughs> okay. groups together. Well, Styx is kind of in that, that realm as well. All right, we're going to take a timeout. Mariner Baseball coming up at the top of the hour. It's Patch and Lucas and us on the Coors Light Frost Brew Studio. The, the number to win is 244-ESPN. We got a text from Keith saying, remind everyone the call-in number 
It's the same one as we've been using for the last 10 years. 509-244-ESPN, 509-244-3776. And just in case you're wondering, it's the same number, caller 10. We try not to change things up. We try to make it simple. I'm not sure how easier we can make it. Well, a lot of people do the call, you know, caller number that's you know, kind of like in sync with their with their their frequency on the on the dial. So we could do caller number 700. Uh, I actually had that, that discussion with Steve one time. Uh, Steve walked out, so I, I don't <laughs> want Steve quitting. So it's caller 10. Pretty simple. Patch and Lukens and us on the Coors Light Frostbrid Studio. The ticket window is now open. This is your Miller Lite Eagle Minute. A look at Eastern Washington University Athletics. I'm Larry Weir. Tomorrow, the Eagle football team hosts Montana State, and it'll be a battle of two great offenses. I'll explain next. Eastern Eagle football is back on the Inferno October 10th. Bruce Field is the place to be for a battle of Big Sky Conference contenders as the Cal Poly Mustangs come to Cheney for Hall of Fame and Cancer Awareness Day. For the first time ever, the Eagles will be wearing special gray jerseys for cancer awareness, and each jersey will be auctioned off at the game with proceeds going to the Community Cancer Fund. This year's inductees into the Eastern Athletics Hall of Fame will also be recognized. Get your tickets now for Eastern Washington versus Cal Poly, October 10th at 105. For information on ticket prices, go online to goeags.com. Eastern hosts Montana State tomorrow in a battle of two powerful offenses. Last year, Eastern edged the Bobcats 52-51 to in Bozeman. Montana State is led by dual-threat quarterback Dakota Prukop, who's one of the best in the nation, according to Eagle head coach Bo Baldwin. He's that good. I thought he was that good last year. They have a nice complement of guys around them. They have good athleticism, and uh, they're an offense that I think when it's all said and done, especially with him at the helm, they're going to be one of the best offenses not only in this league but in this country, and uh, so it's going to be a tremendous challenge on our D. In their first game two weeks ago against Fort Lewis, Prukop had 197 yards passing and two touchdowns while running for 69 yards and another score. For the 11th straight regular season home game on Ruse Field, all the tickets have been sold. But you can listen to the game starting with pregame at noon and kickoff just after one tomorrow here on 700 ESPN. The Eagle volleyball team defeated Corbin College and head coach Wade Benson's final match last night. Benson will become a non-traveling assistant while continuing his recovery from throat cancer that kept him off the bench last season. They'll open Big Sky Conference play next Thursday against North Dakota. Eastern's men's tennis team is hosting the EWU Classic this weekend in Cheney. Play started today and continues through Sunday. That's your Eagle Minute brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Remember to enjoy Miller time responsibly. Whether you're looking to boost your athletic performance or lose that frustrating 20 to 30 pounds, Rockwood's customized programs are based on years of proven research and effective results. Rockwood Clinic Sports Performance provides coaching to people of all ages who want to improve general and athletic sports skills in a fun, safe environment. Rockwood Health Performance provides quality professional training in a professional manner. Book your one-on-one consultation at rockwoodclinic.com. Search sports performance under services. Rockwood Health System, working together for you. So, what do you think of our new TV? Well, the picture's great, and I love that new thin look, but... What? Well, the sound isn't much. Oh, that's a problem with all the new slim cabinet TVs. Oh, well, what should we do? We need to add a TV sound system, like a Bose or Sonos or Yamaha or Samsung. Yeah, but where do we go to get a deal on those brands? Aren't they expensive and complicated? Not at video only. And they've got speakers for your smartphone. If uh, you... At their don't be sorry prices? Exactly. So we can listen and choose what sounds best for us. Okay, let's go to video only and get our gear to sound as good as it looks. At video only, you won't find huge stores with refrigerators or dishwashers, but you will find the best deals on HD TVs, Blu-rays, cameras, camcorders, and home theater systems. Shop around. Just make sure you visit video only, because if you don't, you'll, you'll be sorry. On North Division, next to Costco, video only. Go Chiefs, go! Thanks for calling your Spokane Chiefs. Hockey is back! Saturday night, September 26th in the arena, your Spokane Chiefs open the season against the Tri-City Americans. Aren't you going to ask me? If you have tickets for opening night? Yeah, I've got tickets. You're supposed to ask me about my summer vacation. Okay, what about it? Well, not much. I bought a new scientific calculator. (laughs) Where'd you get the money for that? Well, I was saving up for Mariners' playoff tickets. See you at the hockey game. Go Chiefs, go! Saturday night, September 26th in the Spokane Arena. Your Spokane Chiefs host the Tri-City Americans. It's Bud Light opening night. For tickets, go to ticketswest.com or call the Chiefs at 535-PUCK. 
That's 535-PUCK. So how do you like your new scientific calculator? I'm allergic to cats. You've got to go. They make me sneeze. Spokane Chiefs Hockey opening night, Saturday, September 26th. For tickets, go to TicketsWest.com or call 325-SEAT or call the Chiefs at 535-PUCK. 31-day STA bus passes, now at participating Rosars, Super One, Huckleberries, Safeway, and Yoke service counters. Spokane Transit, how a great city moves. Play buy or sell weekdays during Patchin, Lukens, and Oso. Mike with a text saying I was caller nine. Steve just hung up without laughing. Is this a kindler, gentler Steve? Steve, you don't laugh at caller nines anymore? Oh, that's funny. Good for you, Mike. Mike's a longtime listener. He's been paying attention. Yeah, he has. Um, and no, I, I don't. Okay. He's, it, it is a I mean, kindler, if, gentler Steve. If you ask me on the air, I'm going to say yes. I laugh at people's <laughs> faces. But in reality, no, I don't. Wasn't laughing at Bill Maley. He's picked up those tickets to see Def Leppard, Styx, and Tesla in the Spokane Arena on September 30th. Tickets on sale at the Spokane uh, Arena box office, all Ticket West outlets, and at TicketWest.com or calling 800-325-SEAT. But we have more tickets to give away on both Dick Allen Slim and Patch and Lucas and Oso on Monday. Reminder, don't forget to go to 700 ESPN's Field Pass at 700ESPN.com for your chance to win Seahawk tickets. It's the great Seahawk ticket giveaway brought to you by Wendell, Ford, Nissan, Affinity, and Used. And Steve says if you're already a Field Pass member, it would behoove you to open up the email that you received from us earlier this week. Correct. If you signed up for the Field Pass prior to 11 a.m. yesterday morning, you have an email that you want to open. And then, uh, just so you know, the uh, Seahawk Bears tickets that we're giving away, you need to be in by Monday. But as Dennis has mentioned, we'll be giving away Seahawk tickets up until, what, Christmas? A couple of days before Christmas. I believe I believe the last contest ends on the 22nd of December. So there's always going to be a pair of Seahawk tickets on the field pass between now and because as soon as they take the, the 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 winner is drawn and the winner is notified on Monday, the next pair of tickets goes up. Boom. So if you go to the field pass and there's no Seahawk tickets to give away, that means you have two shopping days left before Christmas. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it works. All right, that's gonna do it for us. You working hard this weekend? Yeah, I'll be I'll be watching football and and grouting tile. Oh. which means that if I actually want to try and change the channel, I have to like clean my hands before I change the, you know, hit the choose. Or, or I could just have somebody hire somebody to be my designated channel changer. Choose wisely, young Rick. Yes. Choose wisely. All right. Thanks to Steve. Thanks to uh, Rick. And thanks to Keith, who's somewhere between Colton and Roselia. Don't forget Friday night sports extra 30th season tonight at 11 o'clock on KXY four. And we'll see you back here Monday. Dick Allen Slam at one, Patch and Lukens at also at three on 700 ESPN. Y'all be good. See you later. Go Eags. Giddy up, horse. Go Hawks. Man. 